I know you had sort of talked about this on social a little bit, the uh, sort of the predicament that you went through in, in that final episode with your back. I mean, the explanation that you gave on Instagram, I thought was really pretty interesting and gave a lot of insight that viewers didn't get to see. I would love to hear it just from, from your mouth, Gregory, how challenging that final challenge was for you just physically. Uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, that's why I felt I needed to explain it on social media because a lot actually happened off camera and, you know, um, there's just a lot as a competitor, there's just a lot I would not explain at judges table to kind of make excuses for my dish and excuses for the execution of my dish. And I didn't want to use my back as an excuse. So that's why I didn't really present it as badly as it was on TV. Um, I'm actually quite surprised I looked that happy throughout the, <laughs> throughout the episode because it was like really bad. Um, yeah, but yeah, but good job on our flight, packing for our flight to Italy, I threw out my back and it was like really bad. And it was like a 19 hour flight. Um, oh. and yet, yeah, we had two days off and then we started filming and, uh, I literally had another huge back spasm during the cook, um, mm. during the cook fire. Um, which they actually caught, they, they actually caught on camera, mm -hmm. um, talking about it, um, cause they're sneaky, but, um, but yeah, you know, I just, I just had to push through and, uh, at the end of the day, you know, because I was in pain, I think I chose to make that dish because I was injured and I knew that it was something I, I could execute in that amount of time. And, you know, my whole strategy with going to Italy, uh, was just really trying to find myself in these Italian dishes and it's Italian food because you know it's not something that I cook at all um, and that when doing my research you know that that dish was definitely something that stood out as something that you know spoke to me it was you know like a long braise it was you know it had savoriness it had bits of sweetness and like all these things that you know just that's how I cook uh, but unfortunately I'd never made it before so you know, by the time it was ready and I tasted it with a truffle, I, I knew that you could not taste truffle. That's why I was like, you know, like panicking at the last minute and like right. throwing truffles in and warming it up and like shaving a shit ton of truffles on top. And, you right. know, you still couldn't taste truffle. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but, you know, I so a at the bottom line is it wasn't the right dish for the challenge. Part B is that it wasn't executed well even, you know, as a dish in itself. And ultimately, you know, that's what sent me home. And I didn't want to use my back as, as an excuse for, you know, everything that would happen to me, you know? No. Yeah. And was there another dish that you, that you were thinking of and then your back happened and, and you decided to go with the dish that you cooked or was it, was it going to be that one the whole time? I mean, obviously I knew, you know, like whenever I think about white truffles, I think about pasta, I think about creamy white things and, you know, my head like literally stopped there. Um, and, you know, I think, I think to be very honest, you know, I think just some differences between black truffles and white truffles, I was lacking that information. Because as you can see, like, like they went off on like how to use white truffles. They were like super detailed, like yeah, it mm -hmm. was a lot of information. Um, There's so many rules, you know, um, and none of us knew all that stuff about the white truffle, you know? Yeah. Um, I think everyone, like everyone flawed actually, but you know, they like some dishes better, but everyone I got some pretty intense critiques about, you know, how we misuse the truffle. Um, and I think that's one of the, the key things that made this season so hard is, um, you know, they just really expected you to have a lot of this knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it was really about who knew enough about these ingredients or this style of cooking um, to kind of make the dish that work best because, Everything you see the judges talking about, you know, amongst themselves, you know, we didn't get any of that information. So that was hmm. one of the, the best ways that they made the season quite challenging, you know? Yeah, and for sure. I, yeah, we, I mean, we talk about that all the time, how, how tough the competition has been and just how little mistakes, especially the further you go in the competition, can just send you home. Um, mm -hmm. Well, in, in a little bit of brighter news, you were nominated for a James Beard Award last month, which is incredible. Congratulations on that. And something that, something that I've, uh, I've really 
uh, appreciate that you've been doing is it seems like you are taking that opportunity, that nomination to really shine a light on not only yourself, but other chefs in the Portland area where you are and other people during this very difficult time. I, I imagine that, you know, you're coming into so much sort of personal acclaim in probably the hardest time for your industry in recent memory, if not ever. Uh, I imagine it's been quite a roller coaster for you over the past couple of months. Um, yeah, it, it has, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, personally, I feel like I just work because I enjoy working and I'm definitely a workaholic and I'm really, really goal oriented and I'm really, really self-motivated. And I'm actually like a really shy introvert, <laughs> you know, um, I just yeah. happen to be like somewhat in the public eye. Uh, so I feel like a lot of the things that I do, they're for myself, you know, it's like competing on Top Chef, it was something I did for myself. And, you know, being able to share that with America and the rest of the world is like, it's the gift that comes with that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously, you know, who doesn't want to be nominated for a James Beard Award? Um, but the reality is, you, you know, everyone has their whole life to be nominated for a James Beard Award. There are people who have been you know, nominated for 10 years, you know, or, nom or semi-finalist for four or five years, you know, so it's, it, it became more of a, a lifelong goal. And, you know, I was giving it a few years. So, um, you know, it just, it just hasn't felt right to really promote myself during COVID. Um, because in actuality, I'm extremely community oriented. You know, I live in Portland, Oregon, which is I still consider it a small town, even though we're like a major American city, like it's pretty small here. We all know each other. There's a huge sense of community. Um, so everyone on that list, you know, from Portland, I'm like pretty good friends with, you know, we work together, you know, like I call all of them to do events with me, charity events all the time, you know, um, just like had a cookout with Peter, you know, so mm -hmm. um, with it, with everything going on, you know, the beginning of COVID, you know, it really felt more important to me about, um, you know, speaking about the sense of community, um, just because I know that this is the sense of community that's going to push us and get us through this. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. I think, yeah, obviously, community is, is so important during COVID and, like, obviously, in the past week during this, you know, time of kind of national unrest, how, how have um, you, like, engaged with your community and, and how has that been throughout COVID? Uh, for you and for the, yeah. for the food community. Um, you know, I think in the beginning I had a little bit of guilt, honestly, because I stepped away from my executive chef position at departure uh, at the end of last year. And I was taking this year to kind of take a step back a little bit. I'm still consulting at departure as calling director. Uh, I was, I'm just about to completely turn in my, my book, you know, um, that's coming out next year. So, uh, you know, for the past 10 years, I've, done so many things I've been on so many planes I've been all around the world multiple times where I've been at the restaurant for like 14 hours a day 15 hours a day uh so I was really kind of just giving myself this year to do kind of one thing at a time for the first time in a really long time and I was going to take this first few months of the year to finish the book and I was able to do that so I had a lot of guilt because I wasn't necessarily 100% attached to a restaurant you know where I was working every day um but I know that there's other ways for me to help and like I know it's not my fault that you know I just don't happen to be working at a restaurant full time right now um so you know I've been using my voice to just work um to amplify the missions and you know amplify the, the things that we need to get restaurants back up and running um I'm on the independent restaurant coalition which is a national group um working with the government working uh, to present bills to the government um so we can get enough funding um you know, really to see what restaurants need to reopen. Um, I've been feeding the homeless, you know, um, food waste and, and food insecurity is something that I'm extremely passionate about. So with like the extra time, I've been feeding the homeless two days a week and, and kind of helping a, a couple shelters get staffed um, in our community. Um, I'm looking to expand those efforts a little bit, um, you know, because a lot of cooks have a little bit more free time right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've, I've definitely been, been trying to stay busy and active and it's been a good way to kind of, you know, come combat the anxiety of, and the uncertainty of everything going on right now. Yeah, of course. Well, that's, that's great. You know, I, I did want to ask you, I found it interesting in, uh, in your final episode, you said that you had a dish planned 
for the finale. I'm I'm curious if uh, if you might be able to give a little bit of insight into what that might. Yeah, be. I mean, like I I had a lot planned. <laughs> you I know, bet. I I you know I had a full game plan. You know, and I. I think back in Boston, you know, like I was like, oh my God, I'm just gonna make all this Mexican food. And I tried to make all these Mexican dishes and, you know, without enough knowledge and enough execution of these things, you know, like it didn't work out that well for me. So I was like, well, you know, especially in the last two challenges in LA, you know, where they're asking you to, to find yourself and, you know, be inspired by a type of cuisine or be inspired by a dish. And, I had a really hard time, you know, being able to express myself through someone else's food. Um, so I was like, you know, my, my strategy for Italy was, you know, to, you know, I had a list of all the ingredients that Italian ingredients that I work with that, that speak to me. So, um, you know, I had uh, a lobster that I was going to poach and, you know, dry tomato oil with like a spicy tomato relish, you know, kind of using Italian ingredients in the way that I would use um, ingredients, you know, in, in, in my world. It had mm -hmm. just a few slices of like really crispy, spicy pickled fennel. Um, there, I, have a, I had a green curry that I was ready to make and, you know, I didn't, I made curries all the time my first season. Right. Um, and now that I've been to Thailand a few times, you know, like I didn't make a curry all season um, because everyone was just like reaching for fish sauce and, you know, all these Asian greens all the time, like all season to yeah. kind of like, all this rich interesting food and you know i think early on you know by the second challenge it was like the second time i had used some fish sauce again and you know gail called me out for you know being using flavors that i was really accustomed to so i veered away from you know anything that people might expect from me and mm -hmm. i was excited to show you know how i evolved with like a final menu um i had like some haitian ingredients that i had brought with me, you know, um, these Haitian mushrooms that I wanted to make this polenta with because we have polenta in Haiti. So there's like an exact correlation. And I, I had brought these black mushrooms from Haiti the last time I went to Haiti a couple of years ago. So I was, ready, I was really excited to show that. Um, and also, uh, you know, this Haitian ganache dessert that I was going to serve with citrus, which is, um, which is also an ode to Italy, you know, like the use of chocolate and citrus together. So, mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to make that meal. Man, that sounds incredible. Sounds good, yeah. <laughs> you can make it for us if you feel yeah, like it. We'll definitely we'll eat come, that. We'll come up to Portland at some point, Gregory. You can say uh, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what, um, I mean, what I responded to, and I think what a lot of the audience responded to in terms of your cooking is that it really did feel like you were cooking things that really spoke to you and were really a part of yourself. And so the, everything you made... Um, was some some kind of expression of yourself. Dan and I were such a big fan of your restaurant concept, uh, Khan. Mm -hmm. um, we thought that was so cool, and we were so happy to kind of see it, um, you know, a little bit executed there. Is that something that would become fully realized for you? Is that, you know, in the books? Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, part of my plan for this year as well was to uh, transition into opening a restaurant this late summer, fall. You know, my master plan was to travel and research all summer and you know go to thailand and go to haiti and go down south and you know like study american barbecue and um do like a seafood tour of the north atlantic um wow. but you know with covid um i'll probably limit travel quite a bit you know i'm still trying to get out of here as soon as possible um mm -hmm. as soon as like things relax a little bit and i'm just gonna get tested and hit the road um but um Plants. I wanted to open up a restaurant in January. I'm probably going to open a restaurant hopefully by next summer. Um, I just want to see what happens with COVID and what the face of American dining looks like. But yeah, um, while that concept was specifically designed for the show, um, because it was extremely limited in what we could do, you know, we had three days that had to be razor focused. Um, but my concept definitely includes everything you saw on Khan. Um, and then all the other things that I enjoy making as well, because, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, again, I, I truly see myself as a global chef. I'm sorry about global flavors. Um, you know, I like lots of cultures that have chilies at the heart of their culture, lots of, you know, ethnic cultures, um, tropical cultures, um, and the restaurant that I plan to present will, um, be, um, a place where a lot of those stories are told, not just Haitian. There'll be a, a, definitely a strong Haitian focus. Um, and a lot of Haitian signature dishes, 
iconic Asian dishes will definitely be serving those. Um, but it will, it will, the menu will be rounded out with some other dishes as well. Sweet. Well, that right. sounds great. I mean, it, it was such a, it was such a pleasure getting to, getting to know you even better throughout the season. I think what Sam was just saying, you know, the, the food that you cook is such an insight to, to the person that you are. And, and we, you know, became such fans of yours throughout the season. So, you know, best of luck with everything moving forward. I, that cookbook, man, I can't wait. Best, I mean, congrats. I, I don't know how anybody writes a book in general, but to write a cookbook just seems like such an insane amount of work. I can't even imagine. So yeah. congratulations on that. I look forward to that. And uh, yeah, Sam and I will, be making some road trips pretty soon once you're back up and running yeah <laughs> all right thanks man have a thanks for the time and have a great rest thanks, of your day. Gregory. Yeah. all right bye Gregory